Good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We give God total praise today. We give God total praise. We give God total praise. We give God total praise. Come on, get to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet. We give God total praise. Come on, come on, just begin to rejoice. Come on, just begin to rejoice. Come on, just begin to rejoice. He is worthy to be praised. He is holy. He is mighty. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And we just bless him today. We come, God, with the spirit of thanksgiving. Just because you are God, not because of anything you've done, not because uh, of the blessings you've given us, not because of the breakthroughs you've given us, not because of the uh, protection you've given us. We praise you, God, just because you are God. We thank you for your blessings, but we praise you just because you are God. So as we come together, we just lift our voices to Jesus. We ask God that you, your presence will fill this place as we worship you. We ask that your presence will fill this place as we praise you. Just because you are God, we give you all glory. We give you all honor, God, as we bring our petitions to you today. Hear our prayer, God, in Jesus' name. We will give you our best praise. We will give you a praise in spite of. We praise you in spite of our situation. We praise you in spite of our circumstances. We praise you in spite of our trials. We praise you in spite of our tribulations. We praise you, God, just because you are God. You are God and, and you are worthy of our praise. So God, receive our praise. We will give you our best today. We will give you our best and we ask that you receive it. Allow our praise and allow our worship to be a sweet savor unto your nostrils. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, come on, just begin to put your hands together for Jesus and just clap. We give him total praise today. We, we put everything else aside. We put our thoughts aside. We put our uh, obstacles aside. We put our concerns aside. We put our worries aside. And we just simply praise your name, Jesus. We bless you, God, today. So all over this all over this state, all over this country. Just begin to praise. Let's give God the biggest praise right now as you watch this video. Come on, let's not just watch, but let's participate. Let's not just watch, but let's sing. Let's not just watch, but let's praise. Let's not just watch, but let's give God all that we have just because he is good. Just because he is good and just because he is God. So we bless you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, somebody give God a praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody's going through something. Somebody needs a touch. Somebody needs a healing. Somebody even may need a miracle. So we bless him. Somebody may need a breakthrough. So we bless him. Somebody has a strong home that's wrapped around you. But I dare you to release it in praise. I dare you to release it in faith. In the name of Jesus. Just because he is that good so i know that we're seen to be prolonging this but i really want somebody to let something go today come on and just let it go come on and let it go come on release it come on release it release it release it in the name of jesus the psalmist said oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good so come on, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We're going to sing some of this today to start. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Come on, it's a real easy song. Come on, even if you don't have a singing voice, come on and just jump in. And, and you're just reciting scripture in this song. He is worthy. Come on, here it goes. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, 
Yes, He is good, for He is worthy, worthy, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Come on. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good, for He is worthy, worthy, for He is good. Yes, He is good, for He is worthy, worthy, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good, for He is worthy, worthy, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Say that. Yes, He is worthy, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good, for He is worthy, worthy, for He is good. Yes, He is good, for He is worthy, worthy. Come on. For he is good, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is. Yes, he is worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, 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 for he is good. Yes, He is good. Come on, lift your hands if He's good. Come on, lift your hands if He's good. Come on, lift your hands if He's good. This is interactive. Come on, lift your hands. The Bible says Jesus is looking for true worshipers. Are you a true worshiper? This is the hour. The hour cometh and now is where the true worshiper We'll worship the Father in spirit and in truth. So, God, we worship you. So, God, we adore you. So, God, we glorify you. So, God, we magnify you. So, God, we worship you in spirit and in truth. You are holy. You are mighty. You are omnipotent. You are righteous. You are glorious magnificent you are God and we bow in your presence right now we bow in your presence we acknowledge who you are God you are the the one who gave his life for us you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords you are the great I am you are the rose of Sharon you are the lion and you are the lamb we give you worship we give you worship we give you worship we give you worship. Come on, we give you worship. Come on, lift your voices. We give you worship. Come on, lift your voices. Come on, lift your voices. Say hallelujah to Jesus. Say, Lord, I love you. I acknowledge you sacrificed for me, God. You sacrificed for me. By his stripes, we are healed. By his nail pierced hands, we're free. 
by his blood we're washed clean now we have the victory come on the power of sin the power of sin is broken jesus overcame He has won our freedom, Jesus has won it all. Come on, we give God glory and magnify Him. Come on, bow in His presence, bow in His presence, bow in His presence. Come on, bow in His presence. We bow in your presence, God, at your feet we sit. At your feet we sit and adore and worship and magnify you just because you are good and you are God. The power of sin is broken. Jesus overcame it all. Hallelujah to your name. He has won our freedom. Jesus has won it all. Come on, say this. We say, Hallelujah. You have won the victory. You're seated in majesty. Come on, sing it with me. Lord, you are the risen King. Come on. Everybody say, Hallelujah, you have won it all for me, death could not hold you down, Lord, you are the risen King, you're seated in majesty. Lord, you are the risen King. Come on, shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph in this room. He is great and greatly to be praised. And we honor and adore you, God. You are magnificent. You are loving. You are kind. You are patient. You are all powerful, but you, God, as big as you are, you pay attention to little old us and we give you glory. We reverence God, your holiness in Jesus name. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Covenant Presbyterian Church on this fifth Sunday in October. For those of you who are longtime members of Covenant, you will probably are aware that normally fifth Sundays have been reserved for the men of Covenant Presbyterian Church. And so you are happy to join us this morning. We're happy to have you join us this morning for our annual Men's Day service. This is our program today. We'll be fortunately or unfortunately, and we'll have to see which, dominated by the men. Uh, and so we hope you will enjoy. We hope we will bring the spirit of God to you in your homes or wherever you're watching and you're joining us from. Thank you.
Now let us be joined and call in our call to worship. Who has the knowledge to create the world? The world. God, only God, the Lord of heaven and earth. Who has the power to silence the storm? Jesus, only Jesus, the word of God among us. Let us worship God. Remember that our Lord Jesus can sympathize with our weaknesses. Since in every respect, he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Holy Triune God, we confess that we have not lived for your glory. When enemies attack us, we trust in our own defenses. When deadly storms surround us, we forget that you are with us. Forgive us, God of grace. In our hardship and affliction, teach us to trust you alone can deliver us from death to life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Good morning. We come before you today with bowed heads and humble hearts, seeking thy grace and thy mercy. We welcome you into the house of the Lord. May the Spirit lead you into action as we leave this place filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hear the good news. Who is in the position to condemn? Only Christ and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Good morning. I hope you are all beginning to enjoy the fall weather as I know when you get ready to go to school in the morning, you're probably having to wear a jacket now. It's a little bit cooler than it has been. But uh, uh, we hope you are, you're enjoying the change in the leaves and so forth. Our scripture from this morning is from the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. But I will highlight the, verse, the first three verses. And they are, are we beginning to commend ourselves again, or do we need, like some people, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter written on our hearts, known and read by everybody. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Now, some of you may not recognize the term letter of recommendation. Some of the older, older ones among you may understand that term. Letters of recommendations are what are given to recommend you when you're applying for a job, when you're trying to get into a college, and other things like that. There are lots of things that we do to, uh, to uh, show who we are and to show the example that we are. Uh, when you are applying for a job, especially when you all get older and you've gone through college and finished college, your, your, your potential employers will ask for a lot of things from you. you might, they may ask you for a resume or a curriculum vitae, which is just another fancy term for a resume. They also may ask you for your transcript your transcript from your college. So be careful when you're going to college and remember that this, all that you're doing is being recorded and just, they may ask for this. All of these things are examples. These things are examples of who you are. And what the scripture lesson this morning from Paul is telling you that you yourselves can be the example. What Paul is saying is the Corinthians from what Paul has taught them, they are being the examples of Christ that Paul has brought to them. And for us as Christians, what we always want to be is examples of Christ that we have learned, that you are learning this morning in church, that you are learning from Pastor Lakeisha every Sunday when she preaches the sermons, that you learn from your mothers and your fathers as they take you through life. We are all examples of the things that we have been taught. We are all examples of the Christ that we profess to follow. So that's what I want you to remember this morning, is be the example, be the good example of what your parents, of what your school teachers, and of what your church has taught you, to be the good example. So let us have a word of prayer over that. Gracious Father, we are truly grateful that you have sent your son, Jesus, into our world to show us the perfect example, the perfect example that we should all strive to be. Help us, Father, help us each and every day to show what we have learned, to show the things that we have been taught, 
and help us to continually strive to be the perfect example as your son. These are all of the blessings we ask in his holy, perfect name. Amen. silently or audibly lift the names of a person or situation that needs prayer let us pray heavenly and gracious God God of our weary years God of our silent tears thou who has brought us thus far along the way thou who has brought us past let us into the light keep us forever in the path we pray for those that are among us that are sick. We pray for those on our shut-in list. 
We pray for those that are immigrants and trying to reach our borders. The people of Haiti, we keep in our prayers, the people of Afghanistan. And in our own community, we pray for the Jones family across the street from the church who has been involved in a fire at their residence. We pray for COVID victims. We pray for those who have lost loved ones during this pandemic and pray for equitable distribution of the vaccine. We pray for ourselves, Lord. We ask for your grace and mercy. Now let us end this prayer by praying the, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is a tradition at Covenant that the man of the year is introduced by the previous year awardee. Due to business commitment, our 2020 Man of the Year recipient, Brother Paris Lucas, is not available. So I'm introducing this year's recipient for the 2021 Man of the Year at Covenant Presbyterian Church. This year's recipient is a long-term member of Covenant. You have seen him active in many ministries at Covenant, the trustees board, the accounting team, the technology and media team, which puts together our online services during the, this pandemic, and probably less notable to the rest of the church as the secretary to the men's council. He is a proud graduate of the North Carolina A&T State University, a very proud Aggie. It is my understanding that he graduated engineering program with honors and is employed by IBM in the Triangle area. He is respected and recognized by many in this church as a dedicated and compassionate uh, son in the caretaking of his mother. This year, Covenant Man of the Year is not new to this recognition as he's been Man of the Year previously. So now we congratulate and recognize Brother Charles Clifton as the 2021 Man of the Year recipient. Charles will be presented with this plaque indicating that he is the 2021 Man of the Year at Covenant Presbyterian Church. As you know, this is our stewardship season, the giving of our time, talent, and treasure. Soon you'll receive your pledge cards in the mail. Please complete it and return it before the dedication of pledges. At this time, please prepare our hearts and minds to support the workings of the church. Dear Lord, thanks for these gifts, and may they be used to uplift your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Good morning. Our guest preacher today is the Reverend Dr. Lamont J. Johnson, Jr. of the historical West Durham Baptist Church. Dr. Johnson has degrees from several theological seminaries and one great institution, North Carolina A&T State University. Dr. Johnson has many appointments and recognitions. His resume is in the Covenant News that you may read at your pleasure. He has four boys, and he's a, he is a great Kappa man, Reverend Dr. Johnson. Lord, open our hearts and minds to the power of your Holy Spirit, that as scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. 
We're doing Psalm 127, verses 1 through 2. From the New Standard Revised Version of the Bible. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the, Lord, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Amen. Second Corinthians, verse 3, 1 through 6. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Surely we do not need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you. Do we? You yourselves are our letter written on our hearts to be known and read by all. And you show that you are a letter of Christ prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God not that we are competent of ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. Our competence is from God, who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Greetings and God bless you. It is a joy to share uh, with all of you saints and friends here at Covenant Presbyterian Church. We do celebrate leadership in the person of your pastor, Pastor Lakeisha Bradshaw Easter, uh, to a good brother of mine and friend, Brother Meacham, to all of the committee members of this amazing Men's Day celebration in uh, somewhat odd times during this global pandemic. Well, you have already heard my sermon uh, scripture. You've heard the lesson from 2 Corinthians 3, uh, 1 through 6. And so we hear those last uh, uh, verses, uh, 5 and 6. Such confidence we have through Christ before God, not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves. 
but for our competency, our competence, or our sufficiency comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant. Not of the latter, but not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Shall we pause and pray for his grace upon this preaching moment? Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace and love divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Preach me now, Holy Ghost, like never before. This is my earnest prayer and plea. In Jesus' name, amen. As you see, our thought for today is in line with your theme, uh, which is more than enough. And so I want to preach uh, for a few moments from the topic more than just enough. More than just enough. Well, I grew up with that old uh, song, of course, uh, uh, an adage uh, from uh, uh, slavery times. I've got Jesus and that's enough. Oh, we've heard that. I've been lied on. I've been talked about. I've been mistreated, been buked, been scorned, talked about, sure as you're born, been up, been down, almost leveled to the ground. But long as I've got King Jesus, long, long, long as I've got King Jesus, long as I've got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. These types of songs have permeated the consciousness of a Christian thought. However, as we peer deeper, uh, even as Wyatt T. Walker in his book, The Spirit That Dwells in Deep Woods, would uncover the background of many of these Negro schools, uh, there was a theological uh, move that covered the pain and the misery and hurt of those in bondage, of those struggling and suffering. And so almost as a defense mechanism, there was this notion or this movement to say, we don't need government, we don't need uh, folk who may be snatched away. If we have Jesus, that's enough. Well, not to undo any theology or any theory that our ancestors have helped us with and helped themselves get through hard times with. But the reality is simply, we need more than just Jesus. I know that's kind of hard language uh, in a, a Christian church, but we need more than just Jesus. Yes, yes, we need a Christ that helps us, and, and the whole of our Christian faith is so that we can bring people closer to God, not be isolated from their community. It is this Ubuntu, this whole idea. Ubuntu, uh, this Zulu pronunciation or Zulu word, uh, literally meaning humanity. The idea that it is not about an isolated experience with the divine. It is not about this singular focus of life and of ministry and of servitude, but of a collective work. And so there is this understanding of I am because we are. Humanity towards others. It is the concept that we cannot be who God has called us to be in isolation. Well, I know we're going to sing that song again somewhere. I've got Jesus and that's enough. Or as long as I've got King Jesus, don't need nobody else. But we need one another. We need one another, so watch this, that the whole can be lifted. Not so that we individually can survive or succeed, but so the whole can be lifted. So that Durham, Durham County, so that uh, North Carolina, so that the Northeastern and the Southeastern uh, uh, regions of America, so that America, so that North America, so that the world can be lifted. We need each other. And we need each other because God has purposed, watch this, the church to help the globe, help the world maximize its potential, help the world see themselves better. 
Now, getting to the place of better people of God here at Covenant is not a place that we, God would pur purpose for us to, to arrive and to achieve so we can pat ourselves on the back and so that we can say we have done it, that we have succeeded, we have fed people, we have uh, uh, helped the homeless, that we have these checklists in church to say that we have done what God has said we were supposed to do, pat ourselves on the back. Saints, I'm trying to tell you, it's more than just us checking these lists so we can pat ourselves on the back. But it is so we can lift the whole of humanity. Why? Because there are too many in this world that are living on just enough. And many not even enough. Here we are on this men's day in this beautiful, absolutely beautiful sanctuary. And in an area in Durham where it really was the hub for, one of the first hubs for black uh, 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 middle class Americans in the country. The first in many, having uh, one of the longest serving funeral homes, even here in North Carolina. One of the first uh, 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 insurance companies, North Carolina Mutual, that, that was for initially the building up of the black community. Uh, burial benefits all here in Durham mm. in a community of plenty. North Carolina Central University. Now, I'm, a, I'm an Aggie, so please don't get mad at me. But uh, at North Carolina Central University, a school literally designed with this founder coming from my alma mater, Shaw University, but North Carolina Central being founded to educate educators to lift the community. And yet somewhere along the line, we, we've missed the focal point of why God has brought us out, why God has given us resources, why God has giving, given us more than enough. It is so that we can hear that Ubuntu again, I am because we are. We cannot succeed if you don't succeed. I cannot succeed if you don't succeed. And so it is not about a, a self-aggrandizement, uh, a self-glorification, but it is about humbling ourselves before the mighty hand of God and lifting each other. It's so much so, watch this, that we have to have a certain type of confidence, a certain type of assurance that we have what we need and not just enough, but more than enough. Uh, more than just enough. While there are so many things that are causing people to live life under the poverty line, under uh, lines where they can literally be healthy, healthy in society, healthy mentally, healthy in their economics, healthy in their consciousness. God is calling us to lift the masses. There's something called social determinants of health, and, and we see this, we see the after effects, aftermath of those who don't meet these few determinants, those who are not on the positive side of this. Social determinants of health, uh, SDOHs, are the conditions in the environments where people are born, live, learn, work, play, worship, and age that affect a wide range of health. Health, functioning, and quality of life outcomes and risks. Some of these can be economic stability, educational access and quality, healthcare access and quality, neighborhood and built environments, where you live and what your community looks like, and social and community determinants. And we, watch this, who have been cleaned up by God's hand, we who have been given the opportunity of higher education and education cannot be satisfied with our own achievements. But we must reach back and lift others up to a place where they too can have the blessed benefits of having more than just enough.
Now, don't get me wrong. This is not merely a, a, a sermon a, a, about things and, and, and houses and cars and land. But you ought to have a faith that's more than just enough. You ought to have an assur assurance in God that no matter what happens, no matter what pandemic or trial or who's in the White House or who's in Raleigh, that we have a faith that is more than enough. And with faith, it's amazing because faith, you don't need a whole lot to have more than enough. As a matter of fact, the parable reminds us if you can have the faith that as a grain of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. We have a faith that's more than just enough. But you ought to have a confidence in your own self that is more than enough. Hear what this writer is saying literally to the church at Corinth. Listen to what Paul is admonishing his people. Even though there are struggles in this early church community, God is speaking through Paul to remind them that God does not abide by man-made, human-made constructs, but God's grace, God's love is bigger. And so because of that, no matter what devices we have to measure where we are in life, the letter, no matter what devices we use to measure where we are in society, God reminds us through Paul at the church of Corinth that our confidence comes through Christ. It's not that we are sufficient in our own selves. It's not that we've made it because of something we have done. But as the saints would say, he looked beyond my faults. Somebody at home ought to say hallelujah. And he saw my knees. I like the contemporary uh, twist on that. He saw the best in me. Hallelujah. When everybody around me could only see the worst in me. And so as God has lifted us, we must lift others and do God's will. Well, I'm a Baptist preacher that don't try to take all day long. So I'm about there. So I understand we have been charged to know that we have a God that's more than enough, but we should have confidence in ourselves that's more than enough. But we also, lastly, must have the knowledge that God can do more than just enough. Hmm. That God has a track record of not being a minimalist in his divine providence and will, but a God that goes above and beyond. A God that gives us what we need, that supplies our needs, not so we can be rich, but according to his riches and glory, so that we all can live above the minimal line of life. So we can have more than enough. So we can have joy that is more than enough when sorrow comes. So we can have confidence. Watch this beyond our healthcare system in a God who is still a balm in Gilead. We can have more than enough that when sickness comes we can have the scripture that gives us more than enough if my mother and father forsaken me forsaken me the lord will raise me up the lord will be my refuge that the lord is my light and my salvation so whom shall i fear of whom shall i be afraid we have more than enough and I, I i know i know you don't you don't use that at the end of a sermon put a twist in the plot. But, but I, I raise this question as I take my seat. What, what are some areas in your life that you are saying, God, I need more of? I, I, I know, I know you, you got more than enough. I know you got what you need. I know the Lord has been mighty good to you. I know the, church, the Lord has been mighty good to, to covenant. But what in your life are you saying, Lord, I need more of? Yes, we have more than enough to help those, but there are still some areas in our lives that we need more. Maybe it's more patience. Maybe it's more kindness. Maybe it's more love. Maybe it's simply, as the hymn writer said, more love to thee, O Christ, more love to thee. Hear thou the prayer I make. On bended knees. If we can have more love for Jesus, mm, more love for Christ, 
there can be more lifting for his people. And the people say, of God say, amen, amen, and amen. to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. 
Thank you again so much, Covenant Presbyterian, Pastor Easter, and friends. As I do every Sunday, I give the Lord's blessing and benediction. For only God can bless. So I give you his word. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed in your going and in your coming. So I speak the blessing of the Lord into your life and declare that you are the head and not the tail. You are above, never beneath. Regardless of your bank account, you are the lender and no longer the borrower. And now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, and the love of Christ rest, rule, and abide both now, henceforth, and forever and evermore. And we all say, Amen. Come on, as we leave today, we just leave giving God total praise. Shout hallelujah to Jesus.